You ready to film another exciting episode of Real Good at Doing Stuff? I can't wait. Got to be more exciting. To be I fair. can't wait. Okay, good. There we go. Oh, oh, Today on Real Good at Doing Stuff, uh, something a little different. Um, you know, when I started this YouTube channel, um, I don't know, it's it's already kind of exceeded my expectations in some ways. And one of the ways that, uh, that kind of surprises me um, that I never expected <laughs> starting this thing off is the, some of the people and friends that I've made uh, at least partially because of this YouTube channel. Some of them aren't really because of the YouTube channel. They're because of projects that I'm, that I'm involved in or whatever. But anyhow, uh, one of those people who I've become friends with is Clay Milliken, uh, the top fuel driver. Um, and recently, Clay invited me to come to the Four Wides in Charlotte, which is only 20 minutes down the road from where I live, uh, and check out uh, you know, top fuel racing from, uh, from the inside. So I kind of thought about it for a second and then jumped at the chance because I thought, you know what, this would be pretty cool, uh, pretty neat opportunity. And, uh, so that, anyhow, the other day, that's what I did. Um, now th I, to be honest, these are not races that I normally would go to, even though sometimes they're in my backyard. Um, because it's so different than the type of racing, the type of drag racing that I do or that you guys know me for. Um, and the, the type of stuff that we do is, is uh, it is what it is. It's kind of a, just a different world. The, the NHRA top fuel thing is just so different. In some ways, it's, um, it's just kind of a parallel universe, <laughs> you know, um, I guess a lot of the same principles apply, but it's just, it's just different. And, it's funny how you can have something like that and and not really, you know, when you tell people you're a drag racer, that's what they assume that you mean. <laughs> um, and uh, in, in my case, and, and honestly, in the case of most drag racers, that's not what you mean. Um, so, but anyhow, um, I jumped at the chance to go hang out with uh, Clay and, and check uh, things out a little bit. So this video is going to be about that. It's just going to be walking around looking at stuff. Uh, and at the end of it, you'll see some, I kind of did some slow-mo, uh, top fuel launch stuff. And honestly, I'm still amazed that the NHRA let me stand where I stood. <laughs> you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, you know, if you've never been to a top fuel race, it's something that you need to do once in your life. I don't care if you don't even care about racing at all. You still need to do this once just to experience it um, because it's it's uh, it's something that doesn't, the TV doesn't uh, transfer. When you watch this on TV, you're not going to get it. Um, it's, a, it's something that you have to be there to really understand it because it's, these things are so violent and so powerful that I don't care what your sound system is at home what you're watching it on, it's not going to be the same. You have to go there to understand what it's all about. But anyhow, let's take a little look at that. We, we talked with Clay quite a bit. We talked to his crew chief, Jimbo. And anyhow, I had a great time. And thanks so much, Clay, for inviting me out to check this thing, check this, you know, what you do out. And uh, anyhow, let's go. Let's take a look. All right. Today on 
real good at doing stuff. Clay Milliken has been gracious enough to uh, invite us to the racetrack to see what top fuel racing is all about. We're here at uh, the Four Wides at C-Max and uh, we're gonna make some noise, right? We're gonna make some noise, but I will tell you this, the last run because Pete's here, Jimbo hit too many up arrows. That's right, well, <laughs> they're contagious. <so. laughs> A little too many up arrows, so qualifying yesterday was awesome, so we're gonna try to go somewhere in between yesterday and what we did Q3 on Q4, somewhere in between. Right, just back it down a tickle, try to exactly. go down. Exactly. Sounds like a plan to me. That's the plan. Right.
Clay, what are you doing? All right, so by NHRA rules, we can only run 90% nitro because we know it's free horsepower. Right. That means 10% methanol. 10% methanol. Right. And so what you always see the drivers doing, or most of the drivers anyway, is adjusting the fuel down from 100% to whatever the crew chief tells you. Right. So like I say, 90% is maximum. I know a lot of the cars out here are dead on 90. Right. We run a little less than that. We base our tune-up around around an 88 percent area we'll right. move up and down a little bit but and the reason we do that is because when we go somewhere like denver where it's 10,000 foot of air we've got an extra we got, percent. More. we got a little more in the tank but it's it's really way simpler than it was 25 years ago when i started right. so we've got this deal here it's it basically is just a hydrometer and it tells us what the percentage is. Right, so electric doodad. Electric doodad. Right. This electric doodad is like 3,500 bucks. I bet it is. But it makes it so easy because, I don't I broke mine, but back in the day, you would take a beaker, you'd put your nitro in there, and you put the hydrometer in there, and right. look at the bubble. Right, yeah. But these things burn a lot of fuel, and so it's a constant. The other problem you have to have, you would think, well, fix all the fuel you need in one go-round. As the temperature goes up and down, it changes the percentage. Right. You can't do that. You can't do that. Right. So we're constantly mixing fuel and checking it. Yeah. I just saw you air in. Yeah. So technically, according to uh, the powers that be, let's say, you're not supposed to aerate nitro because it brings it closer to uh, being volatile. Okay, but I'm gonna edit that out. Yeah. Oh, you can, everybody does it. Everybody does it. But it's just the quickest way, you know, you dump some alcohol in, mix it up, and that way you can do it faster instead of stirring it, you know. I, I have done it before with like a paint mixer on a drill, you know. And, and me and you were talking about this earlier. Nitro is weird, weird stuff. Right. It's not very flammable. Right. Gasoline is actually way more dangerous. But it's explosive. But it's explosive right. when it's compressed. Right, yeah, yeah. So the, the other thing a lot of people probably don't know, especially the folks watching your channel, yeah. is gasoline is actually more powerful than nitro. Oh, yeah. It, uh, the BQs are way higher. Yes. Yeah. But what makes nitro so good is it brings oxygen with it. Right. It is an oxygen bearing fuel, and so you can't put enough gasoline in there to make up what this does by right. bringing the oxygen yeah. in. Just by adding more nitro, you add more power. Add right. more power. You bring oxygen right. in. And, you know, that's what's made these things continually go up in power and just being able to, you know, through heads and better superchargers is increase how much we can burn fuel. Right. The more we put it there, the faster they're right. going to burn. Right. That's it. But yeah. That's all I'm doing. It's a non-stop, about 20 gallons per run, down the warm-up. It has to be prepared. It has to right. be prepared. Yeah. So right. that's what I spend most of my day right. doing that. And, and I'm going to share this on your channel, too. Yeah. Most of the drivers mix fuel near the fuel tank, and you notice I'm about 50 feet away from it. Yeah. Because I can't stop talking. <laughs> I'll talk to everybody out there right. <laughs> and I get lost in what I was doing. Right, then you ain't got no fuel. I ain't got no fuel. You had a good exactly. time, but no fuel. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not ready to go when the motor's ready to go. So. Right, yeah. So that's why I'm always back here. Right. Well, it, makes it, it makes me stronger. This stuff weighs a you gotta lot. Tote it all I gotta tote it all up there. Right. So, yeah. you know, it's part of what we have to do. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Alright, you guys think you gotta a big fuel line. Check this out. Look at this rascal. It's my hand. That's the, that's the fuel line that feeds this thing.
something like that. Yeah. And that was a pretty hot lick. I think anyhow. Oh yeah, no, it was, you know, it, it, it was really a good run. And, um, you know, we've been pretty fortunate this year, Clay and I, you know, Rick Ware yeah. gave us a lot of new parts, um, you know, new car, new clutch parts, um, engine parts, all these things. And, um, you know, as I, um, Clay and I have talked, you know, we, we had some well seasoned parts and, and they but they work really good. We call them news. Yeah, news. I like that. I like that. Um, but uh, we um, you know we got all these new parts and, and the, the worst thing that happened to us we went to Gainesville and tested in February and we did pretty good. Right. And so we're like, man, we didn't really have to change that much. Right. Um, and we did the Gainesville race, we did pretty good there. But once we got out west to Phoenix and Pomona, the car, like if we were running the 330 foot mark, we might be undefeated. But yeah. the problem is there's another there's 670 no. feet for us <laughs> to run. Yeah. And um, we, um, our, our clutch package became way too aggressive. Right. And, um, you know, with these cars, you know, as you and I were talking before, it's like, the, the engine needs to be the boss, and it's like the, the engine and the clutch are in a relationship. Right. And the engine's got to be the boss right. of the can't, relationship. They can't both be the boss. <laughs> right, yeah, the, the engine's the alpha. Right. Well, when the clutch tries to become the alpha, then, well, it doesn't, it, work. It doesn't work that way because right. the clutch will just start, you know, pull on the engine and, and um, you'll, you'll end up getting some tire smoke that way. So uh, we, um, you know, like in Phoenix, we had a terrible Phoenix. Um, Pomona, we got a little bit better, but we still were, were struggling at the 330 foot mark pulling the tires loose. So um, after uh, Pomona, I said, all right, we've got to work on a different package for our, our whole clutch system. So we went to Vegas and, you know, something that we don't like to do as tutors, we don't like backing up, right? right. And um, sometimes you got to. Sometimes you have to, you know, take a step backwards to, to take a couple steps forward. So we, um, we started going that direction and um, you know we didn't put up the numbers that we would have liked but we were getting some consistency going down the racetrack and um, uh, we lost first round at that four wide race and I, I felt we were going to be on a pretty easy lap uh, but we had a, uh, a, a cylinder drop at 1.2 we, um, we actually shot a spark plug out of the head and we had a head that maybe the threads were a little too loose right. yeah. push the plug out um, uh, but Rick allowed us to stay Monday and test and to try to like like hey we think if this plug wouldn't have come out we would have run this. this number right. and, um, and it was great for us because uh, it, it really showed us the way that we need to go yeah. and, um, and that was pretty exciting so coming here to Charlotte you know, we're still pecking away at it. Um, you know, we need to pick up that, you know, 60 to 330 split time. Right. Uh, we're probably, you know, a couple hundreds off from that. And then, um, you know, then maybe, you know, work on our 330 to 660 split to run, you know, instead of running 291, 292 in the eighth mile, you know, try to run, um, you know, 295 miles an hour in the eighth mile. Right. And, um, just doesn't even sound right to me. No, it doesn't. I remember when I worked for Connie Coletta, he was the first guy to go over 290 miles an hour in a quarter mile back in 1989. Now we do that in the eighth mile. Yeah, right. It's unbelievable. But, um, yeah, we've, we've learned a lot. And, um, you know, uh, today we um, tried some different cylinder heads uh, on the car and, um, uh, you know, went from, you know, our, our Alan Johnson stage sevens and then we put some. Uh, Don Schumacher heads on, and um, you know they're a little, a little bit different, right. you know. And um, but there's you know they work good, right. and uh, you know that's the neat thing about you know uh, these manufacturers, you know whether it's Alan Johnson or Schumacher, they're always trying to do something better. So right. AJ's got another head, you know, that right. yeah. he's he's looking at. So you're, you know you're kind of looking at that as well, mm -hmm. whether or not you need to make a you know a, a move that way. Right. Yeah. But um, you know, it's it's these things are um, they're so crazy. Like trying to you know talk about it's like managing the horsepower and managing the clutch application. Right. That's the biggest yeah. thing. Sometimes another little bit of horsepower doesn't really help you. you know? <laughs> no, no, it, it um, you know it's and it's it's like when you when you're on a really good track, you want to try to get as 
much power to the ground as you, as you possibly can. Right. And, um, but it's, you know, everything's got to match with it. Right. The clutch is, you know, obviously a, a, a very integral part, you know, to how you um, right. uh, manage everything. But it's, um, you know, it's coming around. We're, we're pretty excited yeah, you know, yeah. where we're going with this. And, and um, you know, we, we need to pick it up a little bit. Right. You know, uh, Dave Grubnick, he's out there in La La Land, as he usually is, because this car, you know, is, is so, such an amazing race car. And, you know, he, he set the bar, and that's where we want to be. Right, yeah. You know, that takes a lot of work. Yeah, that. that's, that's, that's what the, the challenge is. Right. You know, somebody's got to be the trendsetter and make it work to a good trendsetter. You know? Right, right. <laughs> yeah, be, be the guy that they're chasing. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I appreciate you letting me come in here and look at all your squiggly lines and, uh, and check out how the top fuel thing works. I really enjoy it. I have a, had a great time. Yeah, Pete, well, I'm glad you came here and, and uh, it's up, you know, talking to you and, and um, uh, you know, learning a different side of racing, you know, from, yeah, it's, from what you do. It's, it's like it's, I say, it's the same but different. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Our stuff just makes a lot more noise. Yeah, a lot louder, so that's for sure. I think that that's the, it's like the more you get, the louder it is. The right. You spin, the louder it is. Exactly, right. exactly. Okay, good deal. I appreciate it. All right, Pete.